We can customize and create our own patterns and we can get some nice syncopated rhythms by sprucing them up a bit. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment. But first I wanna show you how to create our own style and category folders. Now at the bottom, first we're in pattern library and we have all of these categories, but at the bottom we have user. So I can right click on here and go add style. And now I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna go rename style. I'm gonna call it my style faves. So with that done, there it is there, I can now go and select patterns that I want. So let's say I like this one. It's now selected here in the pattern viewer. And if I go to my EK style faves, I'll go add, and now I have that one in there. And I can create a collection of my favorite patterns like this by simply adding them to the style faves folder like that. So that's a nice way of organizing the factory styles, but let's talk about customizing the ones that are already in here. Now, in the last video, you saw me drag a couple of these out and build up a little rhythmic pattern to play over these chords. Let's look at what's going on in here. If we look in a note editor for these patterns that have been dragged in, we'll see that there are a series of notes in the very low range of the keyboard spectrum. Now, these are trigger notes to trigger different articulations, different rhythms, but also different articulations based on what notes they're on. And you can look at what's called a stroke map on page 50 of your manual, and it'll give you a little guide as to which notes trigger which articulations. And here's what it looks like. So for example, F minus two is a top up strum, E minus two top down strum, etc. So it's a kind of legend of the MIDI note numbers, note names, and what it triggers. So with this in mind, we can customize patterns. So I've taken the first pattern that I dragged in and I've customized it already. Simply, it's a four bar pattern. Let me just show you what I've done here. Simply by copying and adding and dragging some additional articulation notes. So I've got a more busier pattern here triggering those full strums plus some muted strokes down low. So let me play what this sounds like just with these two guitar parts. So you can see that by adding in those muted strokes up and down and variations, I can create a nice pattern. Now I want to export this and have it appear within Real Guitar in this user area. So what I'm going to do is right click, and this is a little bit different in each DAW, but in this case, basically what I need to do is export it as a MIDI file. I'm going to right click and use the export as MIDI file function. It's found in here. And the important thing is where we save it to. Now the default loops are saved in on the hard drive, the main system hard drive, library, application support, and then within there, music lab, real guitar, and then we have loops. So here's the pattern library of all the existing factory patterns, and then the user library. Here's the style faves that I just created, and I'll call it EK Loop 01 Four Bars. So with that in place, I can now call up real guitar, and it should appear in here. It's not for the moment because we need to reinstantiate real guitar. So let me do that now. I'm going to just get rid of it here and then call it back up. And now when we look in pattern browser at the bottom in user, we'll see there that we have the EK loop 01 four bars. And there are my style faves that I saved and I saved this new one in the user folder loose. So it's appearing alongside the style faves. So Here's the four bar pattern with all the trigger notes and I can now reuse this in future projects. So that's how to organize and create custom styles and patterns.